Hey everybody, it's Hannah and welcome back to my channel. For today's video, I'm going to be talking to you guys about fandoms. So all of the fandoms that I love and I consider myself to be a part of, how I discovered them, how I became a part of them, and the journey that I've had with them and how they impact my life now. So without further ado, let's get started. So real quick though before I start, I have a little bit of a side note. This is a little bit of a different setup for me because I'm actually standing. Normally I'm in front of this bookshelf but I'm sitting on the ground next to my bed. But now I'm standing and it's great. Like I feel like I have so much more like room to like move and stuff. So yeah, it's good. <laughs> so I'll see how I like it. I'll try it out for a little while and yeah, so. So the first fandom I'm going to be talking about is of course Harry Potter. Harry Potter is definitely something that's been a part of my life for about as long as I can remember. From the time that I was really little, um, I was exposed to the world of Harry Potter because my sister and I used to watch the movies all the time. We would marathon them over the summer. We would take the furniture in our living room and slide it to make it into like more of like a movie theater with this big chairs right in front of the TV. So that was always fun, but I didn't actually end up reading the series until about 8th grade. And at that point I borrowed the books from my sister, who ended up getting me my own set of the books. I want to say my freshman year, it's the really pretty uh, copies with the spines line up to make Hogwarts, so that's pretty cool. I love them and the illustrations on them are amazing. So essentially my entire life has been filled with Harry Potter. I got to see part 1 and part 2 of Deathly Hallows in theaters with my sister whenever they came out. Um, I live in Florida, so I've been to the Wizarding World of Harry Potter at Universal Studios a couple different times. I remember the first time that I went, um, we were just walking around just the normal part of Universal and suddenly we turned a couple corners and boom, it was Diagon Alley in front of me. And this was last year, I think, and I just remember how shocked I was because, like, whenever you read the books and you watch the movies and you fall so in love with the story and the setting, it's so strange and overwhelming just to be thrown right into it. And I remember I was just so excited. I almost cried. I literally almost cried. I was just like, oh my god. Because it's just exactly the way that I've always pictured it. It looks almost exactly the same as the movie. So that was really, really cool. I was also super blessed this year to be able to go to England and France this summer. And while I was in London, I did get to stop at a few different Harry Potter locations. Uh, my favorite, of course, being Platform 9 and 3 quarters at King's Cross Station. I took a really cute picture there. I'm pretty sure it's on my Instagram, which is linked down below. I also got to go to this one bridge. I don't remember the name of it, but it was in the sixth movie, if I recall correctly. I think it got blown up at the beginning. And that was really nice getting to see that, even though it wasn't a huge part of Harry Potter's storyline. We were also near the School of London, I think that's what that was called, where Daniel Radcliffe uh, went to school whenever he was young, so that was pretty cool. For those of you that don't know, Harry Potter is a seven book series, now kind of eight, because this is the script for the play that's happening in London, which is like the eighth story about 19 years later. But Harry Potter is a series about a young boy named Harry Potter, of course, who finds out that he's a wizard and he gets to go to a magical boarding school called Hogwarts. and. It pretty much just follows him throughout his journey over the years of going to Hogwarts and his friends and all the hijinks that kind of come along with being a teenager and growing up and coming of age. And it's so good. I'm sure you guys have already heard of Harry Potter. You guys already know what it is because this book is worldwide. It's been around for many years now. But it's amazing. It's, it's a very magical experience reading it. And I'm not just saying that because it has magic in the book. But... J.K. Rowling's created a world where you find yourself falling in love with the characters, you find yourself falling in love with the world that she's created, you find yourself laughing and crying and getting angry right alongside with the characters all throughout each of the stories. And I think that's like a really, really, really amazing thing to have because not all books are able to accomplish it the way that J.K. Rowling has where you feel like you're part of the story and that's something I really really appreciate in these books. So if you have not read these books you should definitely pick them up because it's well well worth the read. So yeah, Harry Potter, an amazing read. While I'm still talking about it, Ron Weasley is definitely probably my favorite character and not because he has the emotional range of a teaspoon. You will totally understand if you have read these books. <laughs> um, and while I'm at it too, I am a proud proud Ravenclaw. Definitely even though my secondary house would probably be Hufflepuff and you should leave a comment down below with what your Hogwarts house is because I would be curious to know. So, 
so I guess that's all I have to say about Harry Potter for right now. Um, I am partway through The Cursed Child right now, and I do think I'm going to be doing a review for this within the next few days. It'll probably be uploaded within the next couple weeks or so, so stay tuned for that. And yeah, so definitely, definitely pick up Harry Potter. And the next fandom, I guess I could say that I'm in, is definitely from my very, very, very favorite TV show of all time. Um, I'm obsessed with this show, and I feel like everybody should watch it, so without further ado... So I guess it goes without saying, that was the theme song for Gilmore Girls, which is, now you, there's no surprise here, my favorite show of all time. So I discovered Gilmore Girls last summer. I don't remember what convinced me to watch it, but I think I had just been hearing a lot of good things about it for a really long time, so I just decided to give it a shot. So I watched it on Netflix once, and I spent the next two, three weeks at that's probably an over an over exaggeration. I spent the rest of the summer, and I watched all seven seasons last summer. And I fell in love with this show. Gilmore Girls has a really, really simple plot line. It's really just about a young girl named Rory and her single mother, Lorelai. And it's about them living in a town called Stars Hollow, which is a really, really cute, teeny, 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 tiny town where everybody knows everybody. The seasons there are wonderful. Like, whenever you see the intro for the show, it shows the town during autumn. And the fall time there, it's just really, really pretty. But it's just about them and their friends and their family members and just about their lives. It covers a time from when Rory's about 15 to the time I'd say she's about 20 or 21. So you really just get to see her grow up. You get to see the changes that she goes through and that her mom goes through that their friends and family go through. And surprisingly enough, the show is hilarious. Like I've never really had a show that made me laugh out loud before like that. But I would be rolling around laughing for like five minutes after a super simple sarcastic line, but it was because it was that funny. It's a super, for the most part, it's a pretty clean show. It's not anything like very inappropriate, which is really good. And it's really, it's just a really, really like, like wholesome, wholehearted, like good show. I definitely have to say that Rory is probably my favorite character. I relate the most to her. Mostly because of her love for books. She loves books so much and so do I. I mean, I have a booktube channel. I guess you guys could probably tell already. But I definitely relate to her the most. She starts out kind of awkward, but as the show develops, you definitely see her become a lot stronger as a person and a lot more independent, which I think was a really, really inspiring thing to watch. Gilmore Girls also really helped me develop a love for Melissa McCarthy. I had never really watched her on too many things before, but after watching Gilmore Girls, I realized just how much I love her as an actress. I feel like she seems like such a good person, like a genuine person, and she's so funny because she played the character Suki on Gilmore Girls, which was Lorelai, Gilmore's best friend, and she was great. I really, really enjoyed her, and I definitely feel like I want to watch everything with Melissa McCarthy in it now because of it. Another thing that I really, really love about Gilmore Girls is all of the memorable quotes that they have from the show. A lot of them are really funny or kind of like inside jokes that you never understand unless you watch the show. But some of them are just really, really cute. Like one of my favorites is I Love You a Thousand Yellow Daisies. Like I just think that's really cute. And if you watch the show, you'd think it was pretty cute too. Um, another one is actually going to be my senior quote as well as a quote that I put on my senior parking spot. And it comes from the Life and Death Brigade in Gilmore Girls. Once again, you probably don't know what that is unless you watched it. But their kind of quote or motto, if that's the word I should be using, is in omnia paratus, which is Latin for ready for anything or prepared for anything, which I think is really, really cool. So that's what I'm using for my senior quote this year. So, yeah. And I'm super, super, super excited because the show Gilmore Girls ended, I... 2000 and something. I'm trying, I don't remember which year it was. I'd have to look it up. But it ended like early to mid 2000s and they haven't had anything on since then. And I know that the producers wanted to continue the show for an eighth season, but because of the network they were on, they ended up having to cancel the show. 
But now Netflix has picked up the uh, show for a four-part special for four 90-minute episodes, and they're calling it uh, Gilmore Girls A Year in the Life. And it's supposed to be set now, from what I've been told. It's supposed to take place now, like present day, if so a few years later. And I'm really, really excited to see where everybody's at with, in terms of their characters because everybody's coming back as far as I'm concerned except for the man that plays Rory's grandfather because Edward Hearman, I think his name was, I I feel so bad if I'm wrong, but he passed away a few years ago, which I'm really sad about because I really, really liked his character. But everybody else is coming back and I'm really looking forward to seeing who Rory ends up with. I really, really want it to be a guy named Jess from the original part of the series. If it's not, I'm going to cry because that's all I really want from this. <laughs> I mean, yes, I want to see who everybody is. I want to see who has kids, who doesn't have kids, who's married, who's not married. But I just want Rory to end up with Jess because he was definitely my favorite love interest in the show. So I definitely think somebody should start building a Star's Hollow because I would totally move there. And I know that once you watch Gilmore Girls, you're going to want to move there too and live there too and live in the Gilmore Girls realm of reality that my brain seems to be stuck in. <laughs> So yeah, definitely check out Gilmore Girls. And up next, we have pretty much anything from the Shadowhunters world. This is City of Bones, which is the first book of the Mortal Instruments. There is also a prequel series called The Infernal Devices. And the first book of a post series just came out called um, The Dark Artifices. I think that's... I'm going to be so mad if I'm wrong because I know the book's sitting on the ground behind me and I just don't want to look. <laughs> so, the Mortal Instruments series as a whole with the five books five oh no but I think it's six hold on it's six I'm a failure at life so the six books that this that these words words are difficult so this series is about a young girl named Clary and she finds out that she is a shadow hunter and what shadow hunters are are um, somebody that's part human and part angel that fight off demons and bad creature monster type things. Um, it's kind of like a secret world. Nobody in the human world knows that these people exist because they're there to try to protect humans basically from the evil that's trying to invade our world. Um, the whole series is pretty much about Clary, though finding out she's a shadow hunter, the friends she meets, love interest she has her life over the short amount of time that the series covers and just her developing into a stronger character and um, some more stuff happens, some battles are fought, some lives are lost and it's a really really great series. I'm not going to spoil anything for anybody because that's just not cool because I actually want you guys to read these books. The new post series that's just come out recently, I don't have too much of an opinion on because I'm only about two chapters in right now. I'm reading that currently also, but I did kind of put it down because like I said, I'm reading Harry Potter right now. But yeah, it's definitely really good from what I've read so far. I just hope it measures up to the rest of the series. In terms of outside of the series, I've never watched the movie adaptation of City of Bones because I've heard from so many people that it sucks. And if that's like one of your favorite movies, like I'm not trying to give any offense to it, I've just heard it's not that great, so I really don't want to waste my time watching it. As for the show Shadowhunters though, the first couple episodes were alright, but once they got through the first couple episodes, I fell in love with that show. I feel like, considering it's a TV show, the TV show can't be exactly the same as the book. It's actually staying pretty on track with the books. Um, the first season just ended a couple months ago, and I want to say that it's stuck on track pretty well with this first book, so I don't know if they're going to do, do a book per season, but if they did that, that'd be totally awesome because, oh, there's so much information they can cover, and I just feel like it's a great platform for this series to be using because having, a, like, an hour and a half, two hour movie is not good enough for this series, for the complexity that this series is. Also, this series has created all of my, like, ultimate ships. Like, all of my favorite couples are in, like, these books. Sizzy and Clace and Malik and who else am I thinking about? What did I say? Malik, Sizzy, Clace. Those are my three main ones. As for the Infernal Devices, Gemma and what's the other one? Wessa? I think that's what the other term is, but yeah. The, the, 
prequel ones are definitely my favorite though and it's the only time I've ever actually been in love with like a love triangle before. Normally I think they're kind of crappy and I always end up hating at least one if not all three of the people that are in the love triangle and that was the one and only time I've actually like just loved all of them. It's kind of weird but you'll understand if you read it so yeah. I definitely think you should pick up this series. Once again, like Harry Potter, it's well worth the read. There are quite a few books in the series so far. Six in this one, three in the prequel, and I think it's going to be three in the post series as well. But I definitely think you should pick them up because they're a pretty quick read. They're urban fantasy, so lots of fun. So, And my last major fandom, I guess I could say, is actually my most recent one because I, once again I started a show during the summer, but it was actually this summer. And I got involved in the show because my best friend had recommended it to me time and time and time again. And that show is Grey's Anatomy. You guys don't understand my level of like obsession with Grey's Anatomy. Like I could probably make an entire video of my anger, angry thoughts and my crying thoughts and my laughing thoughts all about Grey's Anatomy. My favorite episodes, my favorite characters, all of it. For those of you who don't know, Grey's Anatomy focuses mostly around a girl named Meredith who starts out as a surgical intern at a hospital called Seattle Grace and it follows her and all of her other surgical intern friends and foes I guess I could say too from their very start as an intern all the way through them even being residents in later episodes I am not caught up enough to be caught up, like caught up in watching the uh, TV episodes that are coming on now but I'm halfway through season 7 right now and I started, I think maybe the week before school got out I started watching the show. So I've definitely been watching them pretty quick. So hopefully I can get it all done pretty soon and get caught up for TV eventually. My favorite character right now, well characters, is definitely Christina Yang. She's probably my favorite of all time right now. Um, I really, really like Arizona Robbins, and I love Dr. Bailey, Dr. Miranda Bailey. Those are my three favorite characters right now. Um, God, I hope no, but none of them die or, like, leave or anything. I do know a few people that leave in the show because, of course, since I've never watched Grey's Anatomy when it first came out, I always see things online that are spoilers. But I haven't been spoiled for anything too major yet, so hopefully... I don't get completely destroyed so please 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 do not leave any spoilers down below or comment anything or send me anything because I'll actually cry because I really really like being surprised but that show makes me cry anyways. <laughs> Every single episode I'm crying about something from that show it's probably not the healthiest thing but it's just so good I can't stop. So I think that's it everybody for my best favorite fandoms right now that I'm part of that I'm obsessed with that I absolutely love. Um, if there are any other fandoms or series or TV shows you guys think I should get into, leave it in the comment down below. Um, I might try something new soon, so just let me know. Um, but I think that's it for right now, so stay tuned for my next video. Bye!